I just finished doing an errand at Job Lots, and I had this memory that years ago, I think I remembered coming somewhere around here to feed ducks back when I was a kid. So I drove around to the back of the building, and this is what I found. <laughs> I remember this waterfall. I think my dad said it was dammed up as part of the textile mill that was upriver back in the day, but boy, it didn't look like this then. Wow, they've really done it up. It's like a whole park over here. It's called Charles River Reservation. There's like a bridge. It's really beautiful. Definitely much more um, landscaped than it was when I was a kid. So I came over here. There's not a soul here. Nice waterfall, you know, that beautiful heron. And I thought, oh, what a great place to sit and think. So I figured I'd get a couple of shots of the waterfall and maybe some waterfowl. And then I thought, oh, I'll just sit down on the bench and. Yeah, okay, the thing is any place that's right behind a shopping mall and that's a good place to sit and think is probably also gonna be a good place to sit and drink. So yeah, wasn't too long. First, one guy came with a shopping cart. He wasn't bothering anybody. Took out his little flask and sat down on the bench and he was fine. Then this couple came, okay? She's got a voice like gravel. She's like, did you bring the jack or is it in my bag? You got the jack or do I? She's got two black eyes. So, okay, now he stole her phone. You mean my phone? No. What do you mean no? Okay, I kind of wanted to walk around, but I can't go too far from the bus because that dude's circling it. Okay, now there's no dude circling the bus. There's just a lot of geese and ducks because there's kids in a pickup truck next to the bus that are throwing bread at these birds. I guess kids today really are different. I mean, we used to get out of the car to feed them. So I'm just hanging out in the bus, sitting here on the steps, <laughs> kind of spying if you have to know the truth. Just trying to see whether things might kind of mellow out a little, because I really would like to take a little walk around and things just don't seem quite right as they are. The lady with the two black eyes is over there sitting on the bench talking to the guy with the shopping cart. And I should probably say talking at the guy with the shopping cart. He's not really participating in that conversation much. I kind of thought I would do my little, you know, YouTube talk, uh, vlog. I don't know why I have such a hard time with that word, but I kind of thought I would vlog from over there with the waterfall behind me, but those two seem really ensconced, and I'm shy about vlogging in front of a lot of people, but I would think I would be especially shy about vlogging in front of her. Now, I just don't want you to think I'm like looking down on this lady because I am crystal clear that if I had taken one or two steps in a different direction, I could easily have two black eyes and be sitting on a bench myself. It's just that if I'm gonna walk around and explore a new space, I'd like to feel just kind of like a little bit of safety. And it's not like I feel unsafe exactly. It's just that there's like a lot of volatility just kind of swirling around and yeah I'd like to see that dissipate a little before I go on a hike. I'd like things to be just a little more predictable if I'm gonna be exploring a new place. Granted it's behind the big lots but it's still a new place. Oh new development law enforcement has become involved there is a police officer over there and he's talking to both the shopping cart man and the black eyes lady who is noticeably quite a lot quieter when she's talking to Mr. Lawman. I haven't been able to make out exactly what's going on, but the one thing that, the one sentence that did kind of float over here was he said, do you have somewhere else to go? So it looks like he's maybe getting ready to bounce him out of here. I hate to see that happen to somebody who's just trying to enjoy a bottle of liquor in a public place. But seriously, I would feel really bad if he kicked them out, especially because, I mean, maybe they don't have anywhere else to go. 
I can just get in my bus and I'm basically home, you know? So, yeah, I can go somewhere else. But he doesn't look like he's, like, really being super forceful with them or anything, so... I don't know. Okay, well, he's not moving anybody on. He's just going to get back in his car. And, okay, he's looking at me. Camera shy, I guess. Well, it doesn't really look like anything's going to change over here. You know, those guys seem like they're pretty much hunkered in for the long haul. And they're not going anywhere, so I think I'm going to go. This isn't really the destination anyway, you know, it's not where I was planning to take you today, although it is kind of related to where we're going. So where are we really going? Museum time. I got Max a nice parking space. Bye, Max. And now we just have to walk along this path, which goes right along the river. See, I told you it was related. This is actually all the same park. If you want to read this sign, you can just pause the video because I'm not going to stay focused on it for very long. Not when there's stuff like this to look at. This is really cool. Okay, I've been walking behind this woman for like five minutes now. I wish I thought to turn the camera on sooner because there's this goose. It's just walking along. At first I thought it was like her pet goose or something, but every now and then she just swats at it with her umbrella. See? She just did it right then. The goose doesn't seem to even be bothered by it, like he's just used to it, you know? Wow, that's the museum. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like this place. In 1814, Francis Cabot Lowell built America's first integrated cotton mill right on this spot. He also employed women as the primary workforce. Women in 1814. This guy was full of firsts. Can you hear me, Father John? Have you lost what you believe? What's the matter? What's the meaning when nothing's as it seems? Sit down at the table now. There's reason, there's reprieve. We never would go, even those who are yet to come are sharers in your grief. Cause in a little while, when all will be over, you're gonna say goodbye. Go and get your closure in a hundred years. When you're just a haze on the water And then when it clears It's another's turn to discover But you know You'll have to let go This place is like a steampunk wet dream. I'm telling you, everywhere you look there's sprockets and wheels and all kinds of cool stuff. But some of the coolest stuff are these bicycles that you can see right here. I didn't even know this, I grew up here. I didn't even know Waltham was like this hub of bicycle racing. Bicycle manufacturer too. When I really started to look into it, I found so much information on 19th century bicycle touring and bicycle racing. You know, bike racing was the number one sport in America. Bicycles. I really think there is a straight line between the early bicycles of America and the nomadic life that so many of us enjoy today. Bicycles are what made touring possible, you know, travel for the sake of travel, for men and for women, often without a fixed destination. Bicycles made the journey the destination. Does that sound familiar to you? The mezzanine upstairs is dedicated to probably the most famous product to come out of Waltham. There's a huge collection of Waltham watches. Notice I say Waltham, not Waltham, even though the city's Waltham. Waltham Watch's big innovation is that they found a way to make every single part of a watch by machine. Prior to this, a lot of the pieces were made by hand, and that made the watch much more expensive. By making everything by machine, they could lower the price of the watch. It also made repairing and maintaining watches much easier and less expensive because since the pieces were made by machine, they're all identical. So you can swap pieces between watches without any problem where before you practically had to custom make any piece of a watch that you needed. In 1861, they came out with a really inexpensive watch. Well, okay, 
not really inexpensive. It was about 26 bucks, which was a lot of money at a time when people earned on average about 20 bucks a month. But they marketed this watch heavily to soldiers because having a timepiece was really important if you were a military and soldiers went for it. You know, they saved up, they bought them, families bought the watch for them, whatever. They ended up selling tens of thousands of these watches to soldiers. In a little while, when I will be over, gonna say goodbye, go and get your closure, in a hundred years. Just a haze on the water And then when it clears It's another's turn to discover But you know You'll have to let go probably wondering why I'm driving through a cemetery. Am I trying to impose some whole seasons of change, cycle of life kind of theme onto this thing? Well, no. You guys know me really well and that is something that I would do, but no. It's actually a really beautiful cemetery. I like cemeteries. I know, some people think that's creepy, but I like them. Especially on a sunny day. The reason I'm here driving through Mount Feek Cemetery is that I wanted to show you something. I wanted to show you this. This is the Waltham Watch Factory. Pretty cool building. You could live there if you wanted to, because nowadays it's luxury apartments. So if you can come up with 2500 bucks for probably the smallest, that's maybe like closet sized, I don't know, um, all the way up to eight grand, which is what the higher end ones go for, you can live there too. Doesn't seem like anybody that worked in the watch factory could really ever afford to live in there now. Or those soldiers, I keep thinking about them, you know, with their $26 watches going off to war. Yeah, they couldn't live there either. I think the watch factory's aimed at different people now. You know, I don't think I'd pay eight grand to live anywhere. Luckily, I don't have to. I got a bus. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this little visit to my hometown, place that I escaped from when I was 17 years old and never thought I'd be back in, but here I am, I'm making the best of it. Today I took you to three different places on the same river. Well, okay, four places if you count the cemetery. And we had everybody from homeless to 8,000 bucks a month to dead. So yeah, Waltham, Massachusetts, a little something for everybody. Hey, you wanna do me a favor? Come to Live and Let Livestream. Yeah, I just named it this week. That's our little live event that we do every Tuesday night, 6.30 Pacific, 9.30 Eastern. You don't have to talk if you don't want to, but you're probably gonna to want to. I know you. It's the most fun you can have while typing. Think about that. When I will be over, gonna say goodbye. Go and get your closure In a hundred years When you're just a haze on the water And the moon